Now here in the major section of the purport, Prabhupada is focusing on the ability of the great devotees of the Supreme Lord to be able to see past, present and future. Krishna says in the in the in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedaham Samiti Tani, Vartamana and Charjana, Abhishani Shabutani, Mam Pivina Kachana. That Krishna says that he is the knower of past, present and future, Vedaham Samadhi, Vartamana and Charjana. I know I know past, I know present, I know future, but we know one knows. And this regard, Vishwan Chakravit Thakur comments that uh, you know that no one knows Krishna, that the mundaners, the materialists don't know Krishna, and even the spiritualists don't know Krishna fully. Right? And another thing we can also understand from the Bhagavatam, that even Krishna doesn't know himself fully. Because this is a constant competition between Krishna's knowledge potency and the Krishna's potency to enjoy. So, you know, what happens is when Krishna comes to understand his full glories and his glories expand even more, and then he finds them out. And then again, they expand even more. And like this is a constant increase of Krishna's glory, Krishna's internal potency. But we can understand too that from this verse in the Bhagavad Gita, that Krishna cannot be covered over by Maya. Why? Because Maya cannot build her, her own shelter. That is not possible. Okay? Maya, you know, in comparison to Maya, we are very small. But in comparison to Krishna, she's just one of his energy. So Krishna is so much bigger. And we can even think about it from a just from a completely logical perspective, where we can see that, as you say, uh, we were reading about yesterday how Lord Krishna lifted the gold and hill like a child picks up a frog's umbrella, you know. Uh, we can see that the mushroom is usually bigger than the frog. So the, the, the frog takes shelter of the mushroom. But can the frog give shelter to the mushroom? You cannot. If you're standing under a tree, you're taking shelter of a tree. But can you give shelter to that tree? No, it's not possible because you're way smaller. So similarly, Maya is taking shelter of Krishna. And because she's taking shelter of Krishna, Krishna is the one giving her all this protection, giving her all this. It's like standing, she's standing under the tree called Krishna. You know? So she cannot give shelter to Krishna. That's the point that we understand. So similarly, over here, but although it says over here that you know Lord Brahma is able to see these things. Lord Brahma is able to see this. Why is this able to happen? It's because some devotees are three kalagya. They can see past, present, and future. And the entire Vedas, everything in the scriptures, actually there's this really amazing lecture of by Bhakti Vikas Maharaj called The Maker of Scripture. I strongly recommend devotees read this. And in this lecture, uh, Bhakti Vikas Maharaj is speaking about mantra drashtas. Who are mantra drashtas? What does this mean? Mantra means, we know what mantras mean. Like you, the, the, for example, what we just chanted, that's a mantra. And drashta means one who sees. So the great rishis and the yogis, they are mantra drashtas, that they are, that their consciousness is so purified that at the time when Lord Vishnu breathes out, along with his breathing out, all the bona fide scriptures which are existing, which will come into existence, which were existing before, all of them come out of the breath of Lord Vishnu. We see this also in the Bhagavatam, the description of the Vedas being the, uh, being the breath of Lord Vishnu. So the Vedas being the breath of Lord Vishnu. Because they give, that, that's the life of Lord Vishnu. This Vedic knowledge is the life of Lord Vishnu. So these great rishis, these great, these great sages, they uh, become purified to a degree and Lord Vishnu in their heart gives them the potency to see those specific mantras, to see those specific uh, uh, you know, verses, see those specific And they see those verses and they write them down. They reveal those verses to the world. So that is who a mantra drashta is. That is what the rishis, that is actually what the great bona fide rishis and, the, and, the, and all munis and all of them, this is what they do. They actually see these mantras emanating from the amazing breath of, of Lord Vishnu. And because they do this, they reveal this knowledge to us. They reveal this knowledge to us. That's why we can see and understand that even Shri Prabhupada's purpose emanated from the breath of Mahavishnu. And Srila Prabhupada was a great mantra drashta who gave these amazing purpose of transcendental knowledge to the entire world. Prabhupada is able to see these purposes. Prabhupada is able to, all this knowledge is already revealed. And similarly, when the great devotees glorify our acharyas and the great bona fide books that they write, like you know, Bhakti Siddhanta Vaipava, for example, or Vamsi Das Babaji, or Rasikananda, all this already emanated from the breath of Mahavishnu. And those devotees who are saintly and qualified enough get darshan of these, of this mantra, of this great knowledge. 
So similarly, we are seeing over here that Lord Brahma is predicting what is going to happen in the future to Narada. He's telling him in Guru Parampara. He sees this in Guru Parampara. He's, he's, he, he knows why because he's, he's, he's directly connected to the Guru Parampara and, and to his spiritual master. And in this case, his spiritual master is who's Brahma's spiritual master? Krishna. Krishna. The Brahma Samhita says, Trayo Prabhuta Tabhuti Vigyata Kata Sagara Tushtava Vida Sarina Shtotra Rane in a Keshava. That uh, Brahma, you know, he, he finally he got a drop of Vigyata Tattva Sagara. He got a realization, he got a complete realization of the Tattva Sagara. What does this mean? Of the Tattva means the absolute truth, Sagara means the ocean. Vigyata Tattva Sagara. Vigyana, Vigyata means realization. You want to stand up, Jacob? Because I think you are going in and out. You want to stand up? So you see this that Brahma, Vigyata Tattva Sagara, he is able to see, he is able to get a glimpse of the, of the true ocean of the absolute truth. And Tushtava Veda Sarena, so what did he do? Tushtava Veda Sarena, he was able to take the Sara, the essence of all the Vedic knowledge, the essence of Tushtava Veda Stotra Nani in a Keshvam, and therefore he composed this Stotra. And what stotra did he compose? That we recite every day? Brother Brahma Samhita. He composed his stotra. So similarly, same thing over here. He is revealing the pastimes of Lord Krishna to the entire world. He is revealing the entire pastimes. Why? For what reason? For the reason of this, for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord and the deliverance of the conditioned soul. This is what the Acharyas do. Even Shukadeva Goswami, how is he glorified? Yashwara Bhava Makilash Tisara Nekta Madhyat Madhika Madhikatir Shatam Tama Udnam Samsari Nam Tarinayaha Purana Bhujyam Tamjasa Sunnam Abhayam Guru Muni Nam That Srila Sudha Goswami glorifies Sri Shikadeva Goswami by saying what? Yashwara Bhava Makilash Tisara Nekta That Yashwara Bhava He, Ya, He, Swa Anubhava Swa means self, Anubhava means to experience Yes, Svaru Bhava, Akila Shruti Sara Mekta. Of Akila means everything. That's why, that's why one of Lord uh, Krishna's names is, or Lord Vishnu is Akila Dhara. What does that mean? It means one who holds Akila Dhara, sorry. Akila Dhara. One who holds together the entire world. Everything. He's holding together everything. Akila Shruti Sara Mekta. So, he personally experienced the entirety of the Shruti. Yaswara Bhava Akila Shruti Saram Ekam. He was able to experience the, the entirety of the Shruti, Akila Shruti Saram Ekam. And what did he give? He condensed this, this ocean of all Shruti, of all Vedic knowledge. He, he experienced it personally and he gave us the essence. He gave us the condensed, let's just say there's an ocean of milk, and he gave us the condensed milk. He gave us this nectar of the Vedic knowledge. Akila Shruti Saram, Adhyatma Dima Madhiti Tir Shatam Kamodam. Why did he do it? So he can remove the darkness of ignorance which is prevalent in the age of Kali. Samsari Nam Karunayaha Purana Kutyam. Why did he do it? Because he felt compassionate upon all the living entities. You know, and that's why, you know, he is considered a great sage who can enter within the hearts of everyone. He can enter within the hearts of everyone. And we see this that the associates with Krishna are given this potency that usually living entities do not have. For example, when Krishna was going to visit Shrutadeva and Baholashva, these are his two great devotees, and one of them lived in, uh, lived on the edge of Dwaraka, and another one lived somewhere else, far away, two far away places, and Krishna had only limited time. And both of them are his pure devotees. So Shrutadeva is a Brahmana, and Baholashva is a Kshatriya. So, Krishna wanted to, uh, you know, reciprocate with both of his great devotees. And along with him, he had Vyasadeva, he had uh, Shukadeva, and, uh, if I'm not wrong, he may have even had Narakamuni. He had a couple of other devotees with him. So both, so what Krishna did was he expanded himself, and along with it, just expanding himself, he even gave Narakamuni and, uh, and Vyasadeva and the other devotees who were there, the ability to expand themselves. And both these expansions, went to both these different places and they had performed these completely different pastimes. Where, you know, it's not like, okay, in Shukadeva's place, uh, Shukadeva is eating, so then in, in Bahulasha's place, Shukadeva does the same action. No. 
completely different things go on. You know? And we also see this in the pastimes of Krishna and Dwaraka, where all of the descendants are getting married, and there's a specific mohurta that you get married. You don't just get married any, any time that you want. You get married at a particular time. And because you get married at a particular time, uh, it, it, all the auspiciousness and all these things happen. You know, all these mohurtas are there. So Krishna, made, Krishna so many times, he simultaneously has to be in so many of these weddings, along with Devaki, Vasudeva, and you know the, his other relatives. So Krishna gives a potency to Devaki and Vasudeva to expand themselves along with him, and they all go and attend all these weddings, and everything happens at the same time. So the, the point I'm driving at over here is Krishna gives a particular potency to the living entity when he thinks that this living entity needs this potency to perform a particular service. So similarly, Lord Brahma being the head of a sampradaya, Lord Brahma being the head of the universe, Lord Brahma giving this uh, highest knowledge in, uh, meant for the deliverance of all living entities is also able to foresee the ecstatic pastimes of the Supreme Personality of God. That's the point. That he is so empowered by the Supreme Lord that he can see the past, present, and future and actually describe these activities. And this is a very important point to understand. The living entities are empowered by the Supreme Lord to perform these activities. That's why Sri Prabhupada is Shakti Vri Samatha. You know, Kalki Prabhu sent me this amazing verse from the Brihad ba I'm sorry, this is from the Lagu Bhagavatamata, where the verse says, Urvot Paneshu Bhuteshu, Teshu Deshu Kalau Prabhu, Kritva Pradesham Kurute, Yet Abhi Pretam Atma, Atmanaha. So the translation is as follows, and this is a very amazing translation. It's a very amazing verse. So please pay attention. During Kali Yuga, the Supreme Lord fulfills his purposes by entering various living beings who have already been born. The Supreme Personality of Godhead enters into various living beings in Kali Yuga who have already been born to perform impossible feats for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. That's why, if you desire hard enough, impossible will be a word in the fool's dictionary. That's why Prabhupada said, why does Prabhupada did the impossible? Impo who would have ever thought that Krishna consciousness would be spread to the West? Who would have ever thought? Who would have ever thought? Who could have done what Prabhupada did? Anyone else? You know, I was sharing with, uh, with our Guru Maharaj, you know, what you told us in the mood and mission that, uh, that Guru Maharaj writes, that Prabhupada was empowered with specific potency to preach to Westerners. You know? Now, no one else had done that before. Sri Prabhupada had done it. Sri Prabhupada had done it. And because he had done it, you know, he had the specific potency. And, and the Lord is so kind to his devotees, just like Hanuman was empowered by Lord Rama to jump across and fly to Lanka. Lord Rama could have done it himself. But he gave the credit to Hanuman. You know, Hanuman, you know, you, you take the credit. You know, you go and you do these things. And, and you know, obviously everyone knows the potency is coming from Lord Rama. Everyone, especially Hanuman. He knows. Similarly, in, uh, in Mahabharata, if you see, who are the heroes of the Mahabharata? The Pandavas. The Pandavas are the heroes. Arjuna is a hero. Bhima is a hero. Yudhishthira, Nakala Sahadi. They are the heroes of the, of, of the Mahabharata. They are not, you know, Krishna, Gives them the potency to do it. You know, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, you know that, um, what is this? Be my instrument, Sabya Sachin. Huh? The, the, be my instrument. You know, you, uh, these people are already killed. Nimitra, I mean, Nimitra Mata Bhava Sabya Sachin. He, he tells, Krishna tells Arjuna, that, you know, be my instrument. Be my instrument. Why? Because all these people are already killed. I've done it all. I even see the universal form. Bhishma, Drona, Karna, uh, uh, Duryodhana, all the great warriors, the exception of you five Pandavas, and of course the other three Brahmas, Kritavarma, Satyaki, uh, Satyaki is not Brahma, uh, Kritavarma, uh, Ashwatthama, Kripacharya, and Satyaki. They survive along with the Pandavas, but everyone else will be destroyed. I'll show you, look. Shows him the universal form, gives him the divine eyes by which he could see the universal form. You could see all of them entering. So he tells them, you know, I'm doing it, but you can be my instrument. And we see so many times that Krishna 
gives Arjuna the potency to, to perform so many activities, so many things. That we even see that when Bhishma is lying on the bed of arrows. It's a very sad scene. It's a very, very sad scene. When Bhishma is lying in the bed of arrows, he's lying down over there. You know, and he's because he's given the benediction by his father, that he can leave whenever he so desires. He's simply lying there on the bed of arrows, and then, you know, he brings together all the the, the Kauravas and the Pandavas come to offer their respect to him. And there, you know, he um, you know, he requests Arjuna, Arjuna make me a pillow because my head is hanging loose. Make me a pillow. Then Arjuna with his amazing skill makes him a pillow of arrows. He said, this is, this, is a, this is a pillow of suiting a warrior. And then he tells him, Arjuna I'm really thirsty. You know? So then what Arjuna does, he said, go fetch me some water. So all these other the, all these other people in the in the in the army they go and fetch him like you know jugs of water. He said, "This is not the water I want. Arjuna knows the water I want. Arjuna, fetch it to me." And Arjuna shoots an arrow in the, in the ground and brings forth like some some heavenly water, and it falls right into the mouth of of, of Bhishma like a fountain. And all the Kshatriyas they grasp at Arjuna's uh, potency. That like, this is amazing. How is this person doing this? This is the Inconceivable. We are uh, the only person who was uh, just super envious of him was Karni. Just looking at him like I want to kill this guy. <laughs> so bad. But Arjuna had this, this this edge over everyone else. But he is such a pure devotee, Krishna. So even in Maya, the idea yoga of prakta pratana, pakdosi me sakashi the rahasya me the duttam. And Krishna tells Arjuna, so even in Maya, the idea yoga of prakta pratana. My dear Arjuna, I'm going to give you the topmost knowledge. Why? Is it because you're a great Rishi? Is it because you're a great Brahman? No, no. Because you're my great friend. Not only are you my great friend, you're my great devotee. Bhaktos me sakajiti. What is Rahasyam he the Duttama? I'm going to give you the topmost Rahasya. Rahasya means what? Secret. I'm going to give you this topmost secret. Why? Because you're my pure devotee. Because you love me. Unconditionally, you love me. So similarly, Sri Prabhupada loves Krishna so much. And Krishna gave him the Rahasya. Krishna gave him the secret by which he can deliver the entire world, especially the Western world. Rahasyam he the Uttama. He gave him the topmost secret as to how he can do it. And Prabhupada is so kind. Just like Ramanujacharya got on the he got on this pedestal and gave the mantra for the deliverance of everyone and on, at the risk of he himself going to hell. Sri Prabhupada took upon the sinful reactions of all these living entities in order to deliver the entire world. He took it upon himself. He was given the Rahasyam Kheda Puttama. And Prabhupada is so kind, he didn't leave the secret as a secret. He freely distributed the secret to anyone and everyone. Anyone and everyone knows the secret. They can know the secret. Why? Because Prabhupada is also three kala gyan. Otherwise, we are having practical experience of this. And we were sharing this with our own spiritual master when he very kindly called him. Uh, he just called me up. Uh, actually, Krishna Kishan Prabhu called him and said, Nana Prana Prabhu called me and said, he said, Guru Maharaj wants to talk to you. I said, okay. Uh, I'll be there if I miss one. He wants to talk to you on the phone right now. And I said, Nana Prana Prabhu Maharaj, you know, how may I serve you? And he said, uh, why don't you get all the Sankhita men to meet me now while I take my massage? And we all went and we all went and I was so ecstatic. He drowned us in an ocean of nectar. In an ocean of mercy. And there, you know, I, 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 I was sharing this, you know, personal experience we're having about Sri Prabhupada's Sri Kalagyan abilities. That, you know, my Guru Maharaj was speaking in a lecture as to how Prabhupada insisted that there be Sanskrit on these books. He insisted there be Sanskrit and there be this word for word translation, there be the transliteration of the Sanskrit and all this, not just the English. Why? Because Prabhupada said, this is going to give us, this is not going to make us look like we're just I'm talking some nonsense, but we're actually doing something which is completely bona fide. It makes it look more like scripture. Therefore, we're doing it. And then, uh, you know, we were marveling at Shri Prabhupada's Sri Kalagya because nowadays when we're distributing so many Bhagavad says to Westerners, what is one of the most, what is one of the greatest selling points of the book? Sanskrit. The fact that there's Sanskrit in the book. We show them the Sanskrit in the book, and then they say, you see this written in the most ancient language Sanskrit. Then we flip over and we show them this section called the Sanskrit Pronunciation Guide. We tell them just by looking at these books, you can learn the most ancient Sanskrit language. 
And this is a major selling point for them, isn't it? They're like, wow, wow, really, wow. How do so many people are doing this? So many people are thinking like this. Prabhupada could see this. Otherwise, how? Otherwise, how would this happen? Prabhupada could see this. Three kala again. Similarly, Prabhupada said something else, which um, uh, most of our friends in the International Society of Krishna Consciousness do not like, that millions will come to our farms. Now they, nowadays, the Varnashrama project is known as the V word. You do not say the V word. Don't say the V word. It's very bad. Why? Varnashrama. Don't say it. Don't say it. Because of this Guru Ravagya, we are deviating. The mission has gone somewhere else. Mission arrived. It's gone somewhere else. Because of Guru Ravagya. But if you focus upon what Shri Prabhupada says, results will be there. Results will be there. This is our duty. This is our prime focus. Just because, like, how Lord Brahma. Is able to see the future. Shri Prabhupada is also able to see the future. And this is proved time and again and again and again. This is proved time and again. How many more times do we have to see until we get into our thick skulls to do what the Acharya tells us? So am I okay? How about this? Is this okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> to do what the Acharya tells us. How many times do we need to know? How many times do we need to hear this? The Acharya knows what Krishna wants and establishes it on the basis of Shastra. This is a very important point. The Acharya knows what Krishna wants. Whatever Krishna wants, the Acharya knows. And he establishes it on the basis of Shastra. We can even see this. Krishna says, Yada Yada Hi Dharmasya. What else does he say after that? Tanev Bhavati Bharata. All the Hindus will, will, be, will be like, I know Bhagavad Gita better than you if you don't know. This is the one verse that they all know. Okay? So we should all know this. You know that Krishna is over and over and over again speaking about the, about Dharma. And nowadays, you know, Dharma, nowadays people think Dharma means religion. But Dharma is a much more complex thing than that. You know? And you know, nowadays they say Hindu Dharma, Muslim Dharma, Christian Dharma, this Dharma, that Dharma. But what is real Dharma? Dharma in, in, in this sense, you know, and we see this, my Guru is speaking about this in Janmashami like you this year in Zagreb, Croatia. He was speaking about that. Overall, if you look at the Bhagavad Gita, the Dharma that Krishna is speaking about repeatedly is Varnashram Dharma. It, Arjuna is talking, what is Krishna preaching to Arjuna about? Follow your Dharma. Be a Kshatriya. Kill these people. Does the Bhagavad Gita speak about non-violence? Some people say yes. yes. No, it doesn't. It, Krishna is literally persuading Arjuna to go and fight the war and kill everyone. So Krishna repeatedly speaks about Varnashram Dharma in the Bhagavad Gita. You know, violence is not promoted. What's promoted is following your Dharma. And what is your Dharma? That we perform our 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 Varnashram activities in, in, in order by keeping Krishna in the center. By keeping Krishna in the center, we, we follow our Varnashram Dharma, we follow our activities. And by following these activities, we will attain perfection. So this is the point. Prabhupada is making over and over again here. You know, and of course, there's um Amazing details about the Shankar Chuda pastime. And you know, to, to sum up this pastime, Krishna and Balaram were walking with the gopis. And they were, uh, you know, enjoying, you know, Krishna was enjoying with the gopis. He was having, uh, you know, his, his uh, transcendental loving exchanges with the gopis. And Balaram was, you know, Balaram was also there. And they were enjoying their association. And then at that point of time, Shankar Chuda, who's a great, rich follower of Kuvera, gets really envious. We see that. When someone is rich and wealthy and famous, they think all beautiful women are only meant for my enjoyment and no one else. So Shankar is not an exception to this demoniac nature. And what he does is he picks up a long stick and he starts to threaten the gopis to walk north as though he is their husband or something. And then the, and then Krishna, and the gopis, uh, you know, feeling very much in anxiety, they call out to Krishna and Balram. And Krishna and Balram, obviously, they... They are the protectors of their devotees. So they pick up these tall sal trees and start running behind Shankar Chuda. And then Shankar Chuda observing, observing the power of the two brothers immediately uh, you know, leaves the gopis, abandons his, his, his attempt and flees for his life. So Krishna asks Balaram to stay there and protect the gopis and pacify them. 
And Krishna personally runs behind Shankarachula. He runs behind him in order to kill him. And he also wanted to get this beautiful crown, this beautiful uh, jewel, that, this crash jewel, Prabhupada called, or, or the Bhagavatam said, the crash jewel on Shankarachula's head. He wanted to get it. And then he goes, he kills Shankarachula and he gets it. And then when he's bringing this beautiful jewel, all the gopis think, okay, he's going to give it to me. She other ones think she's, she's going to give it to me. Everyone thinks he's going to give it to her. And Krishna, being all knowing, could know that if he gave this jewel to one of the gopis, then there would be super duper rivalry amongst them. You know, is there in the spiritual world and is definitely there in the material world. So, what does Krishna do? Krishna knows how to get out of every situation at all given time. So, what does he do? He goes and gives it to his brother Balram. Can't be envious of brotherly love, right? So, you know, he goes and he gives it to Balram. And then that situation is solved. So, Krishna is very expert. Krishna is very expert in all different things. Krishna is very expert at dressing himself without the Madhava. Krishna is very expert at so performing all the Krishna. You know, the negative devotion is beneath this. So many different words, uh, so many different uh, qualifications of Krishna that we see that are present. And all of, all of these things are there in Krishna. And he's very expert. He's very expert at dressing. He's expert at speaking. He's expert at, 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 at being diplomatic. Krishna is expert at everything. He's expert. All good qualities come from Krishna. Aam sarvasya prabhu matha sarva pravartate. Iti matva bhajante maam bhuta bhava samamuta. Everything comes from Krishna. Krishna is the source of everything. Everything good and everything bad. It's not like they're Satan, no. Everything bad comes from Krishna also. Why? And why is it there to facilitate the sinful desires of the living entity? And also to, you know, Krishna, for Krishna to feel, you know, for Krishna to display his uh, heroism, he comes and saves the living entities from all these demons. So, so many things are there like this. And all these pastimes are being described, you know, in this, in this verse. 